This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to talk about why your dog pants too much and what you can do about it. Dog panting. Well, I think most of you probably know what that is. Um, welcome back for those of you who have been on my channel. If you're new, thank you for being here. In this edition, I'm going to actually discuss a viewer's question. So, different times, many of you submit, you know, different things to discuss. This is one of them. Someone said, "My dog pants a lot. Why do they pant? I have an older dog. What do you think it is? Is there anything I can do about it?" It was a great question, and because of that, I'm we're doing a video on it. Dog panting. A normal dog breathing or respiratory rate is about 30 to 40 breaths per minute. And if you're able to watch Lewis here who's very relaxed on the couch in my air-conditioned office and he's, he's very relaxed on that and he's cool. We've got air conditioning and he's not breathing heavy at all. But what I'm going to do is just after this, just walk, walk downstairs with Lewis outside. It's gotten really warm today. Um, I think with nearly 30 degrees Celsius, which is I'm horrible in Fahrenheit, but I would guess it's we're sort of into the 80s. So it's quite warm outside. And you'll see within no time he's going to be panting. I mean, so what he's doing, he doesn't have the ability to sweat like we do. I mean, he can lose some moisture through his pads here. But the, one of his primary ways for him to cool himself is by losing, you know, more moisture. And he's doing that by panting. His big tongue comes out. And in doing so, I mean, he's able to cool himself. So he'll go from that, you know, 30 to 40 breaths per minute. And if you're able to count it, it could be 10 times that. It could be 300 to 400 all of a sudden breaths per minute. So let's just go downstairs, you get a sense of, I'll even show you what outside of Nelson looks like outside my office. So here we are outside. Of course, Lou still seems comfortable, Naya panting. So now you can see, like he's just starting to feel the heat and he's panting away. I'm now just in the back alley outside of my office where I take Lewis to go for a pee. And, you know, just in that previous clip, you can just see how much he was panting. So, you know, so him going from air conditioning and in no time, up goes his tongue. And, that, and as I said earlier, that's his normal way of cooling himself. And that's normal. What's abnormal is we start to see that, um, especially in these different diseases affecting some of our dogs. Um, where they're in a comfortable air-conditioned space or it's cool and they're panting excessively. So then we know there's something else underlying that's causing that. That one needs to be investigated and two um, maybe potentially remedied. So what are some of the reasons why uh, a dog would be panting too much? You know why your dog for instance is panting too much? Um, so the first thing could be the obvious. I mean they're too hot, they're overheated. Um, so it's really hot outside, your dog's been outside too much, they don't have adequate shade, they're going to pant more. <clears throat> when our dogs are older, you know, such as Lewis, and he's 13, he's not able to cool himself, regulate his body temperature as effectively when he was three. Um, meaning you've got to be even more careful of things like heat stroke. Obviously, if a dog has been left in a car, it can be as short as five minutes, their body temperature can rise in no period of, in very short order. Uh, to the point of heat stroke and rapid, rapid rate. Um, in terms of measuring heat stroke, we know a dog's normal temperature is around 103, um, 103.5. When we start, I mean, if you could just go use a thermometer, take your dog's temperature, you know, if it's 104 and higher, they're pressing, progressing towards heat stroke. When it rises as far as 109 degrees, you can be looking at irreversible signs of heat stroke. We've got this rapid rise in body temperature. It can then secondary affect the brain, lead to seizures, and your dog can die from that. So the big first big obvious thing, they're panting too much, they're too hot. Get them to a cooler spot. Help them cool down. Um, offer them fresh, cool water. If need be, you, know, you can put on, get cool towels. Put those cool towels sort of in here in this groin, right? That's a great way to cool them down. This is an ice pack that it just grabbed from the freezer. And you can just, you can use these. I mean, directly, this is the plastic one. So you can put directly onto your dog's skin. I mean, stick it right into his groin. Um, and a great spot is, you know, into the groin, hitting that big femoral artery right inside this, this inner big bone. See the thigh here? 
great way to provide some instant cooling relief to your dog because you're going to be cooling that artery which is going to provide that cool blood to the rest of his body. Our dogs that have the pushed in faces, uh, you know, things such as the pugs, they're called the brachycephalics. So you look at Lewis's here. Sorry, Lewis. Good boy. And he's got the big long snout, nice big airway, easy for him to get air through his nostrils into his mouth. These guys that have these pushed in faces, they're going to pant more, period. I mean, you have to be much more careful of them as far as with heat distress. I mean, they can't draw near as much air as fast into their lungs and also lose their body temperature as quickly. You know, so they can't pant as fast, evaporate. They're, so they're much more at risk from heat stroke. You just be much more careful with them. Some of the diseases to think about, uh, heart and lung disease. Um, typically, I'm thinking about dogs with heart disease and or heart failure. Those dogs can then secondary have fluid that's either within the main airways of the lungs. Uh, in other cases, they can have fluid just outside the lungs, but still within, you know, affecting the lungs themselves. Regardless, what that's doing is that compromising their ability to breathe properly. So in some cases, some of the initial signs is going to be panting. You're going to see this exercise intolerance. Your dog just doesn't have the energy level they should have. <clears throat> first, if you notice this, I mean, the first thing is not rushing for a remedy. It's you know going to your veterinarian, having, having an examination, probably more of a workup to determining the cause of that, and then have them treated appropriately. But if one of the things your dog's being diagnosed is pulmonary edema, that's where you've got fluid within those, the bronchi, the bronchioles, the main airways of the, the airways of the lungs, then one of the things your veterinarian may discuss is a diuretic. Um, there's one called Lasix or furosemide. It's pretty effective. Um, but part of the issue with furosemide is one that's got secondary side effects. So if your dog's going to drink more water, going to pee more often, and often lose potassium. So an alternative one to consider is dandelion or dandelion tincture, which I have here. <clears throat> and the big point with using dandelion or da dandelion tincture as an alternative type of diuretic is it needs to be made of the leaves, uh, not just the root. Most of the dandelion tinctures are the roots. So you need to have the leaves, um, which this one is. And you're looking at a pretty average dose. We're looking at about a half of a mil. So that's about, that's here. That's about a quarter of this dropper full. That's a half a mil for 20 pounds of body weight uh, and given twice daily. Dogs will pant when they're in pain. You know, it's so common to see that at the clinic. I mean, these, these guys are uncomfortable for whatever reason. And say, for instance, there's been a car accident. You know, they've got a, a, a fractured leg. Um, your dog will pant. I mean, that's just part of it, his pain response. So if you've got an older arthritic dog, Lewis is one of them. He's got signs of arthritis. You know, he's really kind of hiking up one of his shoulders. Definitely is a lot stiffer now when he's moving his rear limbs. And he may all of a sudden jump really awkwardly, tweak something, and really start to pant. Well, that's a pretty big indicator. And if you've witnessed that, pretty good guess, you know, that he's hurt himself. So one, you could look at some type of conventional anti-inflammatory. You may want to have something on hand. Um, if you were to use an over-the-counter thing, obviously discuss it first with your veterinarian. I mean, of all the quote-unquote safest ones would be aspirin. I mean, looking at an aspirin dose of 325 milligrams for 40 to 50 pounds of body weight given twice daily. Um, there's some caveats there. You might want to make sure your dog doesn't have liver disease, kidney disease, isn't any other on any other type of anti-inflammatory drug, also isn't any on any type of corticosteroid. A couple of holistic anti-inflammatories that you can consider, ones that I've discussed in the past, uh, curcumin and boswellia. We've got these two guys here uh, as you're looking and this is the 400 milligram of the 95% curcuminoids. So you're looking at a dose of 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily of the curcumin and about a, a dose of half of that 50, mil, 50 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily of the boswellia. And these two work really well in combination. And, and they're shown to be quite effective, especially in comparison to some of the nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for being very helpful. And the other big benefit, not having all those secondary serious side effects. There's a disease called Cushing's disease or hyperadrenocorticism uh, in which your dog's adrenal gland is producing far too much cortisol. It also happens in us. Uh, fairly common in our older dogs 
And often one of the first clinical signs many clients will notice is their dog is just excessively panting. <laughs> Along with, you know, this increased cortisol, you can see an increased ap appetite, they're eating more food. Uh, you can see almost they'll lo lose a loss of muscle mass. You might see their belly sort of be distended and swaying. Not just, a, not just normal aging changes. Um, they can have hair loss. Some of these other metabolic changes that can show up with Cushing's disease. So in terms of alternatively treating Cushing's, um, a couple things to consider. One, you want to be look at supplementing your dog um, with a variety of different supplements, their antioxidant. They're going to prevent, potentially prevent additional oxidative damage to that already, you know, affected adrenal gland. We want it to stop being damaged for whatever reason is underlying is causing it. Um, so one, I mean, here's a citrus bioflavonoid combination. So you've got, I mean, what it's done is isolate, it's the color compounds, the colors that come in, for instance, you know, the, the pigment that makes the orange of oranges, or the red of the apples, which has got kerosene in. See, the, within those, it's got some great um, anti-inflammatory, anti antioxidant properties that could potentially be very beneficial for some of these more chronic diseases, you know, such as Cushing's. So when you want to get your dog on a, a bioflavonoid combination, supplement. Um, in particular, I like the ones that also inc include ECGC, that's the flavonoid in green tea. The dose is very randomly based on uh, the combination of the ingredients. So typically what I'm suggesting is, is look at the suggested human dose. We're looking at a, an average human of about being about 160 pounds and then dose your dog accordingly with those supplements. But obviously doing it, doing it in conjunction with their veterinarian so they're aware of what you're doing. You know, I'm giving in, you know, an, 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 a specific antioxidant, antioxidant supplement. A dog that pants a lot may be anemic. So that may indicate some serious, you know, disease affecting their red blood cells and the definition of anemia, low red blood cell count. In terms of diagnosing that, you know, if you were to see your dog, an anemic dog would typically show as being very weak. Um, you may see more labor, breathing, and or panting. And if you were to lift up your dog's lips and look at their gums, such as Lewis here. Oh boy, Lewis, <clears throat> just lift up your lips. I think as you can see in there, he's got pretty pink tongue, pretty, from where you can see his pink gums, they're quite pink. That's a normal, healthy pink color. In a dog that was anemic, I mean, those would be pale or white. They've got such a low red cell count. So if that's the case, first, I would just want you from this video to get the sense to be able to diagnose it and get a sense, I think my dog's anemic. Then go see your veterinarian and get, an, get a specific diagnosis as what is, the causing, what is causing that. The last one is sort of the anxieties, the fears, the phobias. You know, be it a dog who's just got separation anxiety. He's gonna be panning a lot. All of a sudden a thunderstorm is approaching. Here he hears the thunder crack. You know, he's gonna start panning, he's anxious. Um, in that case, then you wanna consider, you could consider a number of different things. I mean, there's conventional veterinary ones for treating anxiety and for treating phobias. There's a couple natural ones that you can consider. Um, one is, there's one called L-theanine, which we have here. So you're looking at an L-theanine dose of about 25 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight uh, given twice daily. So this one here has the 300 milligram, this is the dose within it. So you just get a pr proportion of based on your dog's body weight um, accordingly. So this is the, this one's called the Zen-theanine. And then the last sort of anti-anxiety anti-panting remedy I wanted to discuss was lavender, lavender essential oil. So it's one where you could actually um, directly put drops onto something like a bandana, you know, tie and dilute it, tie it around your dog's neck. Or once again, put about 10 drops in a cup of water in a, in a humidifier and drop that in and have that, you know, misting in an area. For instance, if there's one room where you have your dog during things like thunderstorms. And I found it to be especially helpful as far as anxiety. And in terms of the last thing I wanted to mention with, with something like the L-theanine, for instance, is it's one I've also discussed with different dog owners about using if they've got a dog that has Cushing's disease. So for instance, it's a very, very common hormonal disorder and not everyone goes for the conventional veterinary treatment. But one of the big signs is just the big problems with clients is that they've got this dog who's just constantly anxious. Can you imagine having your body flooded with cortisol all the time? You just feel constantly anxious. It's, 
that's sort of the the fight or flight hormone that gets released. So your dog is just on this constant state of anxiety. So if you can lower that anxiety, they're less, first they're gonna be more comfortable, not just panting less, they're gonna be happier. And I uh, had a number of different clients try the L-theanine and found it to be helpful. So sort of one last tip that I think you guys should all consider. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets on dog panting. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above that can subscribe you to my channel. Then you can go ahead, click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.